So now this gets to a little, to me, a little bit of personal. Um, since my last lecture here in April, a close relative of mine was diagnosed with brain cancer. And this has intensified my search for looking for answers. There is a huge conflict within the family, as there is in many families, over how much conventional treatment should be given. Um, example of the thinking, I, mean, I touched on this before, for the glioblastoma multiforming, conventional oncologists become ecstatic about the addition of the chemotherapeutic temidar to their usual regime <coughs> of surgery, radiation, and steroids. This is the glioblastoma multiforming, which is the most serious uh, brain tumor. When its addition increased the two-year survival from 8% to 25%. So that was considered this tremendous breakthrough and so on. So um, I wanted more. That's what I call this one. Uh, I, I wanted to do a little bit more than to, get, to try to get this relative. I think he's a young person, get him an extra two years. So I then began um, doing intensive uh, discussions with any people that I know who know about, a lot about this, uh, internet, book research. And much of the lecture reflects some of the findings that I had. This is a guy who I'm sure nobody's heard of. His name is Eve Saperstein. And he has this website, which again will be in these CDs. His son, 20 years ago, developed brain cancer, and he did his own personal research. And as a result of research in peer-reviewed literature, he came up with a program that he has applied uh, to some cancer patients. Now, I heard about him from a colleague, a colleague's <coughs> wife, who, who knew a, a stage four uh, cancer patient who was sent home to die, a woman in her 50s or 60s, was sent home to die, and uh, she, so we hadn't heard from her for a couple of months, and she, she was afraid to call because she was convinced she would die. So she called her, and she answered the phone very, in a very phone of voice, saying, oh, I'm fine, my cancer is gone. So, uh... That got my interest, and because you don't hear too much about stage four cancers completely, you know, going away with completely non-toxic treatments, or with toxic treatments for that matter. Um, so anyway, I, I wound up going to his website, and I recommend that you go to the website, you look at some of the videos he has on it, especially one I'll be talking about in a few minutes by uh, Cedric Garland on the vitamin D. And um, he showed me, he has he set up on his Skype machine to show <coughs> Uh, before and after cancer patients with the CAT scans and so on, and shows how many of these cancer patients, the, the, the stage four cancers were gone, you know, after several months of, of his treatment. So what is his treatment? Well, I, we talked a little about it, and uh, he, uh, he uses nutrients like D and K2, D in much higher amounts than I heard of anybody using. So his, his uh, he starts all adult cancer patients on 15,000 units of D a day. And he wants them to have a blood level done in a few months. He also, every patient gets high doses of K2, and a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about is going to be related to both general information about D and K2, but also applications for cancer. Um, he also had many other things, which I was very familiar with and which I was very into. I mean, for example, every patient got iodine. How much? About seven milligrams a day of iodine. That's like a half iodorol tablet, for those of you who know that. And that's what he was given. This is more or less in line with what Gerson was doing with all of his cancer patients using Lugol solution. Lugol solution, in fact, is a uh, iodorol is, is a Lugol solution in a tablet form. So this, this really uh, had an, it got me thinking at least and wanted to get me to explore some more of this. 